Oh, it's only 6.29. Oh. And... There we are. We are online. We are on TV. <laughs> Chairman LaFrance? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Very good, then. Um, I understand that everyone is here from the committee. Is that... Is that actually the case, or we just have a quorum? You you have everybody here except uh, Mr. Burke. Mr. Burke. That's what I thought. Mr. Burke said that he was not going to be able to make it tonight. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you all. First off, for taking the time to be here. We have a few things on the agenda. Um, the first thing is to review the minutes of March 12th. Has everybody had a chance to read those? Yeah. Very good. Then I would entertain a motion. If no one has any additions, subtractions, or corrections, I'd entertain a motion to uh, accept the minutes as written. I so motion, Bill Gaynor. Bill Gaynor. Thank you, Bill. Bill Gaynor is a motion to accept. Do I hear a second? Tony Schwill, second. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Sure. Very good. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Are there any Tony, opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, Mark Vogel, abstain. Thank you, Mark. The uh, minutes will be approved by the vote. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, LaFrance? Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, since it's the first time that this, this commission has met with the, uh, with the online capabilities, one of the things the city attorney pointed out to us is that we actually have to call out the person mm -hmm. because we can't see them and, and get their vote. And Deb Patrick is taking minutes tonight uh, for us here, so uh, she can grab their name as soon as they say you should call them out. Okay, thank you. We got him for this one, uh, but for the for the motions, for the motions we'll d yeah, we'll need a roll call vote. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Mogul. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mr. Trillo. Tony, I. Mr. Keeler. Thank you very much. So noted in the minutes. We'll take care of that. Do we have any citizens' petitions at the moment? We do not, sir. All right. Then we'll move on to old business and status. Uh, Harbor Master's report on recent activities. Jeff, are you there? I am here. Um, things have been uh, fairly quiet. Uh, the only thing that's coming up that the... Um, Commission should be aware of is the, uh, the the dock proposal by Pine Island Marina and the moorings that it's going to be affecting. I am going to meet with Steve Carlson and come up with a recommendation for the commission to review. So that should be um, my I, my intentions are to get it to Carlson and have it distributed before the next meeting for review and discussion. The next meeting. Uh, I will let Mr. Carlson know that he needs to get on the agenda, I believe. Is that correct, Carlton? That, that's correct, because this will be a recommendation from the Harbor Master to the Commission. Okay. And that's uh, basically it for right now. Very good. Anyone have any questions for Jeff? Uh, I thought 
the last time we discussed this, there was uh, already a list of moorings. Has it changed? The list of affected moorings have not changed. If you recall, um, the compromise was going to be that those moorings were going to be substituted in the Pine Island permitted grid. Correct. So there's going to be an exchange process. Moorings that will be affected by the dock project will be replaced by other moorings within the grid. So I'll, we're going to work together and come up with a proposal for the commission to review. Okay. That's, that's my recollection. Thank you. Any other questions? Not hearing any. Jeff, you have nothing further, right? Uh, that is everything I have for this evening's meeting. Yes. Very good. All right. Then moving on to new business. We're going to take these in order, Carl? That, that's correct. Um, um, Mr. McCausher is online with us tonight. Very good. Then we will be discussing the DEEP marker permit application for Shinnecasset Beach Club, located at 115 Beach Pond Road. And if Mr. McCausher is here uh, and has a presentation he would like to do, we would love to hear it. Boy, uh Thank you for uh, having me uh, part of your meeting this evening, and um, I look forward to uh, Carlton um, uh, the application and our survey permit that was prepared by uh, by uh, Jay Dempsey. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't done Skype before, so I'm not sure exactly how uh, whether you all have a copy of this or can I share it or uh, what's the what's the appropriate uh, method of. Okay. So You're doing a very good job of sharing your uh, desktop at the moment. Well, is that, that, may be, uh, that may be Carl or something. Cor correct. They have it in their packet, and it should be coming up on the screen shortly. Everything lags behind a couple of seconds from TV time to real time, um, and Jill is putting it in the, into its categories right now. You can now see it on the screen. <laughs> so just a little background, I, I believe... Most everyone is probably familiar with the Shenacosset Beach Club, but we've we've uh, been in existence since uh, 1901, and uh, most of that time we've had uh, a raft, uh, marker buoys, or swim lines zoning off the uh, the waters directly off our property. Uh, the markers and lines are seasonal. We we uh, we put them in place in May, and we remove them in uh, September. Um, over the past year or so, we've had an ongoing effort to make sure that uh, we're all, all of our uh, the beach company is in compliance with all various state and uh, local regulations. And then in that review, it came to our our attention that uh, all these years we've we've had these uh, swim lines and buoys and raft, we've never had the uh, we've never had permits, and uh, and found that we are required to have permits to. Uh, mark off our, uh, our swim area. So in that vein, that's why we're uh, here today and obtained appropriate documents from, uh, from DEEP. Um, what you're seeing on the screen right now is the actual survey that Jay Dempsey uh, prepared. The, uh, the permit requires the, uh, the Chief Ex Executive Authority approval, which in this case is the, uh, the City Mayor, Keith. Keith has forwarded this on to the Harbor Commission for your review and hopefully your approval. Uh, once this approval is is uh, obtained, uh, hopefully Keith will sign the uh, will sign the uh, authority approval document, and then it gets forwarded on to Deep for their approval. They review the the uh, the survey map in front of you and make sure that uh, it's complete and uh, there's. There's regulations associated with uh, what's allowed for uh, uh, swim swim areas. I won't go into all that right now because it's probably, I'm not sure if it's required. We can get into some of it. Um, I'm not sure if you can uh, you can rotate this uh, this uh, survey up in the upper left hand corner. There's yep. There you go. So. What you're looking at is a picture uh, or a, uh, a 
the survey that Jay did, and it, it, it details the, uh, the area of the, uh, the swim area that we're applying for. Uh, you can see the groin or the uh, jetty that's on the on our eastern side of our property, adjacent to uh, to uh, Avery Point. And uh, as the uh, survey states, the dimensions that are on that uh, survey uh, it shows the property line along uh, Avery Point. It's the approximate riparian line shown as an extension of the property line. That's that uh, line coming off to the right of the jetty. Uh, it shows that the groin is in within our property line. And those small little dots that are out uh, beyond the jetty and beyond this, what we call the swim float, those are the actual markers themselves. And the, uh, the numerical values that are, that are next to those markers are the uh, are how many feet, uh, how, what, what the distance in feet is to the mean high water line, which is also uh, delineated on the... Uh, on the survey, that's those uh, dotted lines that are in close to the shore. So this is all the type of data that DEEP uh, requires. Um, one of the requirements is, and it's it's uh, it's in the text just to the left of the uh, swim line. Is there's seven seasonal buoys? They're not in the they're not in the water as the date of the survey. As I mentioned, we we they're seasonal. We take them in and out in May, in September. It shows that no lines are running uh, between the uh, between the buoys except where shown, and that's kind of uh, where the uh, dotted line on the western side of our property. That's the swim line that comes off the uh, off the beach and kind of uh, runs up to the uh, first marker on the on the western side of the uh, swim area. So the. The line all the way to the left. One of the one of the criteria is, and I think it's on here somewhere. Uh, it's in our. The buoys can be in. Uh, one of the requirements is the buoys. It could be in, at low tide can be in no more than uh, ten feet of water, as long as you have a swim raft. Uh, I've measured the the depth there twice at high tide, because uh, I had never had my timing correct to get there or at low tide. Um, but the, at high tide, the, the depth at the raft and where the buoys are is about eight feet. So at low tide, depending upon how low the low tide is, it's uh, it's usually anywhere between six and seven feet at uh, at low tide. And, and lately, it's we get full moon. It's probably even less than that. The on the western side of the property, you can see there's a, a line coming off. That's the uh, that's the uh, approximate riparian line shown uh, as the extension of the property of our neighbor next door. Um, one of the criteria is uh, on a swim area is that your uh, the distance between your marker buoy, which is shown off that dotted line, the extension coming off the left, is no more than five feet within their rep uh, riparian line. You see, we have um, you probably can't see it because it's so small, but there's a 77 feet between our the closest marker buoy and that repairing line, so we we believe we meet that criteria. Um, we want to we want to make sure we have this uh, we we have obtained this permit because we we want to create a safe zoned area for, for our for our swim raft and and, uh, and, and the swimming to, to provide the uh, protection from uh, any boat operations. Uh, the markers and lines are, are placed waterward of the beach property, and the swim buoys and lines have been in place for many decades and have not interfered with any uh, local recreational boating. So that's a brief overview, and I'm not sure what else uh, you'd like me. I, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, as I said, we want to make sure that we're in compliance with all the uh, the state and city regulations. That's why we're going through this process. We want to make sure that uh, everything is above board and we're, we're complying with uh, all of the uh, requirements. So, can I answer any questions? Or? Very good. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. McCausher? Uh This is Jeff Music, Grunt Harbor Master. Uh, Mr. 
Kausher, what's the dimensions of the raft? It's, uh, yes, it's uh, very Mr. Chairman, this is Carlton. Go ahead. Yeah, I've had a couple of conversations over the last couple of weeks with um, uh, Mike Krasinski, um, and this was one, one of them, um, and he, he had no issues with anything except it for the commission to uh, look at it. Uh, the reason the mayor did not sign it is that he's also a member of the committee of the Beach Club, um, and it, he, he's just given full discretion to all this, and that's why we're overseeing this this piece of it but Mike G has been um, has been in conversations about this with me and if I'm looking at it correctly this uh, permit application is only for the marker buoys to delineate the swim area anyway is that correct that is correct that's correct so any any questions having to do with a, a raft or whatever can be brought up at a, at a different time then. is that correct that's correct so we could go ahead and further questions on this, if there are any. And I hear a long 
bunch of crickets. So, so everyone is uh, is satisfied. They understand the purpose here and uh, realize that they're going to be putting seven marker buoys out. I'm really surprised this wasn't grandfathered, but that's okay. Um, and the, at the moment, the mayor has asked us to look at this to make sure that it is keeping with the harbor management plan. Uh, so I would ask for a motion to accept and uh, allow this permit to go forward based on the fact keeping with the harbor management plan. Anybody like to set such a motion forward? Mark Mogul, uh, I so move. Anyone like to second Bill that? Gainer, uh, Bill Gaynor, I second that. I see no problem. Very good. Um, then we'll do another roll call here just to make sure that we're doing everything by the by the numbers. Um, so, Mark? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Uh, Mr. Chirillo? Yes. Okay. What am I forgetting? Uh, Bill Gaynor? Yes. All right. And that is a unanimous. You forgot to state your vote. Pardon? You forgot to state your vote. All right, so, Carl. Yes, sir. I have a copy of this. Um, did you want me to let the mayor know that we found this to be in keeping with the harbor management plan and that we have no reservations? Um, that that's in the minutes that Deb's taken tonight, and uh, we'll have those out shortly. You know, probably tomorrow, and then um, the mayor can sign it. He'll he'll know that in the morning, with, and we'll send that right over. Very good. Uh, as I said, I have a copy of the application. Do you have an original? Yes, I do. Okay. So, no further problems with that. Very good. Thank you, Mr. McCoucher. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate the time and and uh, and, uh, and your understanding. Thank you. I'll uh, I'll be signing off now, and uh, take care. Thanks. There's some bandwidth saved. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you are coming in um, all broken up uh, at this point. I wonder if it's a sign-off. You were crystal clear up to that point. Pardon? There you are. That's much better. Okay. So this is a permit for maintenance dredging outside of 1 and 2. Many of you will recall that we actually looked at this permit quite a while ago. There has been a change uh, to the permit, and as I understand, having gone through all 600 and some odd pages of it, the single major change is that rather than the dredge spoils and taking them down to New Haven to dump them and dump them on the water there, it actually leaves as landfill on the property. Is that correct, Tom? That's correct, and and uh, Gil from Woodwind Current is online to um, answer or uh, approve or uh, do any type of questions or presentations. We do have the application available to be online to shown on the screen. Um, late uh, early this morning or, or late this afternoon, early this ap or late this afternoon, and I forwarded you the change uh, on the application uh, that uh, Gil had sent out. Gil, do you want to just, uh, they do have a copy of it in their emails. Um, if they haven't got to that, you want to just explain that to them? Yeah, hi, this is Gil Ryan with Woodard and Current. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, Gil. Yes. Okay. So, um, the application for the certificate of uh, permission, um, it was the, the sediment to be dredged um, adjacent to the Graving Dock uh, gates was uh, the the plan was to use that as um, beneficial reuse material into an area you know in water placement where they're also doing remediation of the dredging 
at the shipyard. Um, but in recent correspondence with the DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers, um, the decision has been made that the, the uh, dredge sediment will be uh, disposed of at a uh, permitted either landfill or uh, upland disposal facility. So um, I guess maybe semantics or just, I'm not sure, but it was, it was never intended to be um, you know, disposed of on site, not you know, not on the land. It was the original intent was for the the uh, sediment to be used to fill in where um, other remediation dredging was is going to be done. But again, the decision has been made now that the uh, dredge sediment will be disposed of at a either a, a permitted uh, landfill or upland disposal facility. So, commissioners, I this is Carlton. Um, once again, we, uh, Gil has had uh, 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 numerous conversations with us. He was very generous in, in getting the, the size of the books out for printing, as requested. Um, in the earlier application, uh, the in the in the middle of the uh, getting the application, that's when um, Deep had uh, kind of not kind of said that they wasn't going to accept that on, on landward and and. As you've seen today, uh, Mr. Ryan um, changed his application so that he could get it up to the state and for the commission. So they're seeing a, a you're seeing a clean copy of this uh, on there. And I've had conversations with Mike Grzynski on on this piece too, um, because we, if, uh, if I think I've spoke with Robert the uh, LaFrance, the chairman on this, is that we were wondering, did we really need to see it again because it was approved in '18? Uh, Mike Krasinski said yes we did because of the subtle changes in the chemistry of the uh, the composition of what was coming out of the um, dredging. All right, did everybody uh, understand that first off? Mm -hmm. Yep. Does anyone have any questions? No. I just have one. And that has to do with, I assume that you guys will be using trucks to transport the, the dredge material? Uh, yes, I believe that would, that would be correct. And what are the hours of operation that we could expect the trucks to be running? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know that right now. So this maintenance dredging, again, is being conducted uh, in conjunction with um, remediation dredging being done at several locations uh, at the shipyard there. So once all the material is dredged and dewatered, um, and then based on you know the, the sampling of the dredged sediment and the um, you know selection of a disposal facility, uh, then it will be determined. You know I don't, I don't know I know it's 1,300 potentially 1,300 cubic yards from this maintenance dredging, I don't know how much, what the volume is from the remediation dredging, uh, how much sediment there will be. So I, I don't really know the, you know, the number of trucks or, you know, the number of trips that it'll take to dispose of the, uh, the dredged sediment. Okay, I just, I'm a little concerned about having a convoy of trucks running back and forth continuously at all hours of day and night. Isn't uh, that portion of electric boat um, uh, a highway, a state highway, that runs in front of where the trucks were coming out? When we do talk, make sure we say our name first so that we can catch it for the minutes. Sorry. Uh, Mark Mogul, my question was, isn't that section of the road that they'll be using a state highway? Uh, this is Gil. I, uh, are you talking Eastern Point Road? Or yep, yep, the part that runs along from where yeah, it comes down and it goes across in front of where that, that area is. But, uh, part of that is a, is a state highway, right? This is Carlton. All of that, where that trucking lane is, is considered a state of Connecticut road. The Eastern Point Road, not in not all up to the up to Rainville Avenue. That's where it becomes a state highway on 
from Eastern Point Road goes up Rainville down Clarence B is all considered state state roads But I think the chairman was was uh, correct in, a, in asking the question about uh, the timing uh, on this because of the uh, South Yard Assembly Building. Uh, typically, if it's not the foundation, uh, the uh, hours of operations uh, for moving stuff off the site is from uh, 6 a.m. till 7 p.m. Um, uh, Monday through uh, Saturday. Sunday, no work uh, at all. Very good. Uh Mr. LaFrance, you're, you're coming in all broke up again. Okay, let's see if that will... Hello? Any better? Uh, right now, yes, you are. You're, you're, you are better. Planes flying over his house. Hello. Mark Vogel, I can't hear what you're saying, Bob. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, hello. Yeah, you're coming in all busted up. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, because you're coming through the you're coming through the phone. Yes. I'll put my phone on the microphone too. Yep. Okay, go ahead. All right. So I would entertain. A motion to approve the certificate of permission for EB, given the change in uh, what's going on with the dredging material. What? Someone will need to make a motion. And announce their name. And announce their name, please. Uh, it's Mark Mogul, so, so move. Okay, we have a motion. We want to second. Bill Gator seconded motion. Roll call vote now, Chairman. Yep. Um, attempting to deal with my computer here. It seems to be <laughs> causing problems. All right. So we have a motion to approve the DEP Certificate of Permission for Electric Boat. Bill Gaynor? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Anthony Chirillo. Yes. Excellent. Mark Mogul. Approve. Mark Mogul. Okay, so I also vote yes. That makes it unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Thank you all very much. I appreciate your time. Have a good evening. Stay safe. Awesome. All right, and that brings us to our last bit of business. Which, Carlton, if you would be kind enough, this is whoa. Yep, I'm I'm here, Bob. 
So this I'm is losing my computer entirely. My oh. computer just crashed. All right, <laughs> so you can stay right on the phone then. Okay. Yep. We got you up the microphone. So Okay, very good. Um, I know you have a hard copy of this also, but this is the SWW uh, uh, South Wing Wall Fire Main Project, um, and we have on the phone, Mr. on the on the Skype tonight, Mr. Peck. Um, I this came in last Thursday, and we did get it out to you. Um, the reason you're seeing this from a harbor management position uh, is because you're pa they're past the CGL line, the co uh, Coastal Jurisdictional Line, um, uh, in here, and that's why Mike uh, Grzynski, or Deep, um, he just represents our area, um, it, you're, is, is needing, needing approval uh, that they had to brought it before you and for their maintenance of the fire main. Uh, Mr. Peck, can you pick it up from there? Yes, Carlton, thank you very much. Uh, this is Jason Peck from Electric Boat. I uh, just want to go over an upcoming project we have to replace the fire protection piping within Graving Dock 1 Basin and also along the south wing wall. Uh, due to salt exposure that occurs when we flood the Graving Docks, the fire protection systems in these areas have experienced corrosion and are required to be replaced. Uh, as Carlton said, under the general permit for coastal maintenance, uh, EB is required to submit a registration application, which is shown on the screen here, uh, for the reconstruction of permitted structures. Uh, the permitted structure we're going to be modifying with the replacement of the fire protection system is Graving Dock 1. Uh, it's worth noting that the same project that I'm outlining here was conducted in 2018. On Graving Dock 2. As for the scope of work, uh, Electric Boat has contracted a vendor to remove the existing fire protection piping along the north and south walls of the Graving Dock 1 basin, as well as along the south wing wall. Uh, the old piping that is removed by the vendor will be placed into Electric Boat managed scrap metal accumulation containers. The vendor will be directly replacing the old fire protection piping system with a new fiberglass reinforced epoxy resin piping system. Uh, the configuration will remain the same. It's essentially removing the old piping and putting in this new fiberglass piping in the same manner. We will not be doing any excavation for this project. As Carlton shows on the screen, um, that's an image of where the project will be taking place in Graving Dock 1 and along the south wing wall. If there's another place that you'd like us to be, we can move the screen. Uh, if you want to go to uh, page 18, Carl, Carlton, if you don't mind, it will show a schematic of the fire protection piping system. You just tell us when to stop. Okay. Keep going, please. Page 18 of the PDF. I think. Did he get back on the computer? Did he show back up? We're just waiting for it. To, we're just waiting for it to repopularize inside the screen. There, it takes a little okay. bit. <laughs> Is that the page you'd like us to be on? Yes, that's correct. Yep. Okay. So this is a diagram of the fire protection piping in the graving docks. Um, just for reference, um, the blue lines is what we will be replacing. Um, no. That covers the, the scope of the project. If anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to, to talk to them. Mr. Chairman, are you back online?
I'm, I'm trying to call him on the phone and see if I can get him back. Okay. You are? Okay. Um, we're, not hear, we're not hearing you, but I will put you on uh, speaker like we were before, okay? Okay. Yep, you're okay. Go ahead. So um, uh, I didn't, if you heard the rest of Mr. Peck's position here, the screen that this page 18 we're on is the blue lines are the diagrams where the piping needs to be removed. Um, he uh, I think he finished his presentation at that point if then he's looking to see if there's any questions that needs to be answered okay does anyone have any questions I'm hoping everyone can hear me yes I do. yeah we hear you because I can't hear anyone else except for for a problem yeah, he, uh, we, we did get responses back from others who said, yes, they could hear you. Oh, okay. Well, I can't hear them. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, so does anyone have any questions? No, but nobody has responded back. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. Anybody? This is Tony. I motion to approve. Tony Cirillo made a motion to approve. Okay. And anyone care to second this? Mark Mobile, I'll second. Mark second. Mark second. Very good. All right. All in favor, please say aye. Let's go through the rule again. Mr. Mobile. Aye. Aye. Mr. Cirillo. Tony, I. Mr. Gaynor. Bill, I. And I will vote aye as well. The motion passes unanimously. So we will be happy to sign the approval. Thank so, you, everyone, for your time. So the. Okay. So w once the minutes are done, we will we as usual will send them right up to Mike Krasinski up to deep, and um, w and he'll have the uh, knowledge at that point to proceed on with his app their application for a permit. Very good. Um, Carl, I have one quick question, and that is, do you want me to stop in and sign an original copy of the minutes from the last meeting for you tomorrow? Uh, no, we can we we can do that with uh, Deb Patrick's um, signature. Okay. Very good. Yep. Very good. So, all right. As staff, I just got a couple of things. Uh, as you, as uh, if um, Jeff gets his his um, uh, negotiations done for the switching of the moorings, you'll have that mm -hmm. next month. And also, uh, we have uh, a referral in for a text amendment uh, uh, in the WBR zone uh, in the Five Corner District in the WBR zone. You, I, I the commission will be more interested in the WBR zone than um, anything because that's the waterfront business use uh, mm -hmm. group and uh, residential use and then um, I will forward that out so you get a reading of that tomorrow or Monday uh, but those are the two things that are currently on the agenda for uh, June excellent that should be a uh, an interesting one any other correspondence None, none from the city. All right. Anybody have anything else for the general welfare of the committee? I hear nothing. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for spending the time to be with us tonight. I hope everybody stays safe and enjoy the weekend. I will call this meeting adjourned. Still there, Carlton? I, I am. Okay. It didn't go as badly as it could. <laughs>